What can be said about Jesus? We all know the story. 2,000 years ago, a man had a beard. Some people loved it, so they banded together to form Organization 13. And some people didn't, so they killed him and he teepos. And as you can probably imagine, with a fan base as loyal as Jesus's, it was inevitable that at some point, there'd be tons of video games based off of his stories from the Holy Bibble. And there are a lot of them. Trust me, There are a lot of them. We've even talked about one of them nearly eight years ago on this very channel called The Zoo Race. Even though you probably can't tell, it's a racing game about Noah's Ark. Except in this version of the story, Noah tries to bomb all of the animals with explosive barrels and the losers get left behind in the Great Flood. video I did about that single game was 25 minutes long with an 8 minute filmed intro. You know, the Dark Ages. And that's extra embarrassing because you don't need that much time to talk about it. But the thing is, games like that and the Bible game on PS2 are a bit too nebulous for me today. They're about the whole Bible. And today I wanted to specifically look at games that were only about Jesus. Starring Jesus, controlling Jesus, loving Jesus. The first game we have today is called Run Jesus Run. Well, let's see what this is all about then. So yeah, that was fun. As it turns out, Run Jesus Run is also known as the 10 second gospel. And that's because the game does indeed last for 10 seconds. And no, I don't mean it lasts that long if you game over. Even if you beat the game, it only lasts 10 seconds. It's very true to his real life. You run left and right while hitting spacebar on each screen to, as the game says, do Jesus things. You save the sick, you walk on water, you jump over a hole. My favorite Jesus thing. And if you do enough of those things at the correct time, you beat the game with all of your apostles. But we can't. I'll just leave him there with his friends Mufasa and plus sign. Especially with his schlong hanging out, they didn't even take the ring off. So you know what we have to do? We have to save Jesus. It's a game on Steam. And the first thing the launch page told me was, this game doesn't look like other things you've played in the past. As such, we don't have much information on whether or not you might be interested in it. How do you like your Jesus? Good or simple? I quite like my Jesus to be on the fastest setting. Okay, let's go. It's time to save Jesus. The story here is that Jesus has spent so much time saving you that now he's got stuck and needs you to return the favor. Level one, click to get rid of the sand blocks. Okay, simple enough. Did we just murder a Roman centurion by dropping a bundled collection of human skulls on his head? That was metal as shit! And yep, that's basically what you do here. You click on blocks to make a boulder roll on top of Romans, whether you use a sack of skeletons, a spiked cannonball, or a rolling obese cow. You just need to click on blocks and hope the physics kill all of the Romans. And no, you can't hit Jesse. Otherwise, he heads off back to his dad's house for the weekend. My favourite thing in the game, though, are the explosives. God, they're so violent! They just launch everything right into the face of everyone! I haven't had this much fun since the last time I sang a- Sadly though, I'm getting bored, so I got to this old Whiffly Johnny and stopped. Did you know that there is a fighting game on Steam where you get to play as Jesus Christ? This is Fight of Gods, and even though the game isn't explicitly about Jesus, you get to play as him beating the shit out of Moses. So what are the pros and cons of this game? Well, the pros are, uh, it's a fighter, you can play as Jesus, you get to beat up Moses. Just look at how he arrives into the arena. I'm back for the people. Jesus doesn't need to try and get out of his prison. He takes the prison with him. And don't worry, if fighting Moses is a little bit too racy for you, then you can always beat up Father Christmas. The only problem with Fight of Gods for me, though, is that I blow chunks. It's way too hard for me. And I can't tell if it's because the game isn't very good or I just can't play it right. Every special move I tried happened by complete accident. And even when I changed the difficulty down to very easy, I still got destroyed. This game nails you harder than me. On to the next game. What am I getting into with this game then? And then... Uh... Jesus? What is going on here? Oh look, it's my favourite biblical figure, Jesus Staff. Wait, so why is this game called Jesus? Who or what is Jesus? I'm completely lost. Which is because this is a game for the MSX2, a Japanese home computer system from the 80s that was famous for kickstarting Metal Gear, but is now more famous for having nothing in English. Like, come on, I can't even make a joke about what's going on. I get given a load of options, I click them to make something happen, then these squiggles turn into new squiggles. What am I doing? I don't understand this moon language. So apparently there is in fact an English fan translation of the Famicom version of this game that you can play on an NES emulator. And at the very least, everything makes a little more sense 
until this thing pops up and kills everyone. Alright, fine, this game was a stupid choice, but you can't blame me for looking at it. It was literally called Jesus. I had to give it a look, didn't I? Oh, <laughs> came back. <laughs> Like Jesus. So why don't we check out something that's more obviously about Jesus with his name in the title? Like, I don't know. Five loaves and two fishes! You all know the story. One day, a man went to the corner shop to get groceries for 5,000 people, but they only had five loaves of bread and two fish. Luckily though, Jesus was there, and he turned that small shopping bag into a feast. Only one time though. Sorry, Ethiopia. Here's another story for you. In order to play this game, I actually had to sign up to a Bible study forum and purchase a yearly subscription to access the download page. You're welcome, zealots. My username is... Goddy has a great body. Now we need to pick a profile picture and... <laughs> There are some fantastic ones. The one I ended up picking, though, is definitely the best. I'm starting to think I donated money to a cult. So now I have pleased the almighty worm. Please don't kill me, worm. I have to fill out the rest of my details. First name, Span. Last name, Ish. City, Spain. State, Churros. Yeah, I think we're done. And here we go. Five loaves and two fishes, which should probably just be fish, and the word five is written while the number two should be written as a word like the number five, but I'm not gonna be that guy, otherwise I'll be accused of blasphemy. Let's start this thing up. Oh, hello, young man. Nice boat you have here. Oh, yeah, you've also got very nice hips. Well, yep. Hello. Oh, I'm okay. Here. Wait, what's going on? Why can't I look up? Why am I stuck staring at his lump? Well... It looks like you're steering us in the right direction. What are you talking about? I just got here! Wait, where did I come from? Where am I? Who is moving this boat? We're going slower than Mary Magdalene's libido. The boatman tells us we need to head to the town nearby and convince my uncle to come with us to see me. So off we go. And no, we can't go any faster because going to see the son of God is not that exciting. We then find my uncle busy working in a well with his lovely collection of JPEGs. And he's not happy about us going off to see the G's. So now it's time to argue with him. And if you think for a second that these dialogue choices affect anything, you're a complete wrong man. Because in every conversation, only one of these choices is the correct one to get the game moving on. And if you pick the wrong response, guess what happens? The Messiah? Here? <laughs> Well, now I've heard everything. Now, now, what the game wants me to do is tell him that the real-life food and water we need to keep us alive isn't as important as Jesus' morning breath. And you know what? That convinces him! At this point, Uncle Fester tells us to find some bread and fish in a nearby house for the trip. Only problem is, nothing here can be clicked on, or jumped on, or climbed on, or prayed on. We're stuck in perpetual misery that not even God could save us from. And I was stuck here for 15 minutes before deciding to give up and make my way over to some more buildings over there. I got there, and I can't even get in! Thank you for playing our game and learning this important Bible story. We hope this story helps you believe Jesus is the Messiah sent by God to save the world. And believe it or not, there is a Jesus game on the spectrum. Galilee, which is a place Jesus went to one time. And in that story, um, I think he wanted to go and see a concert and he didn't have a ticket, so he tried to sneak in without anyone noticing. Well, the game isn't about Jesus. And Jesus isn't in it. But it does count because... This is a location, and Jesus can be anything, even a place. So we boot up the game, and this happens. Time to play Galilee, 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 Figaro. Oh, it took five minutes to load text. Galilee is a text adventure. Yeah, no graphics, no music, just text. The real adventure is in your head, and that's the best thing about playing a video game. You wake up with a throbbing cock. There is something very important to do, but you cannot remember what it is. What do you want to do now? Well, let's press enter and see. You are in the graveyard. In the distance, a field is ready for harvest. Obvious directions are north or west. Okay then, uh, go north. You are in the graveyard. You hear groaning and screaming. What do you do now? Join in! I don't understand! Alright, fine. Oh, hang on. A maniac jumps on you and hits you. What do I do now? Uh... Attack maniac. I don't understand! Okay, um... Jump on him? I don't understand! What if I... Uh, hit him back? You hurt your hand. Maniac says, I'll kill you again! Hang on, what? When did he kill me the first time? What do I do now? I, I don't know. Uh, all right, fine. Kill him. You do not have a weapon. The maniac leaves. Well, hey, I'm not done with him yet. Chase maniac. 
A maniac jumps on you and hits you. What kind of a place am I living in where I can't walk three feet without a maniac leaping on top of me? You know what I want to do? Move house. I don't understand. Now he's saying he'll kill us again. You know what? I don't want to go to Galilee anymore. Galilee sucks. So let's go back on Steam and see what we can find next. Like... Jesus Christ RPG. We start off in a nice little house where we keep water, fish and eggs in treasure chests and then waddle our way over to Mother Mary to let her know we're leaving to get our first Pokemon. We walk around the town, talk to people and find out that we can't help the organ player get wrecked because I can't perform miracles yet without travelling to the desert to get baptised. Because even if you are the son of God, you're still useless until you get wet. We go to the oasis to get baptised and come out looking like a stupid baby. As it turns out, I learned exorcism and all it took was me getting a little bit damp. Suddenly, Satan of all people appears. If this guy is supposed to be the root of all evil, why do I want to get a beer with him? He tries tempting us to jump off of a cliff to prove that we are as great as we say we are, and we reply, you are not to put the Lord your God to the test. And because of that cop out, Satan sends Beelzebub after us with all of his minions in brown trousers. Time for a battle then, yeah! Demonic fly uses smelly finger. You know what? I don't want to fight anymore. Which is good, because in the game, I can always choose to refrain. I mean, after all, that is what dad would want. Well, I died. And we get the greatest message I've ever read. Jesus Christ was defeated. <laughs> Sorry, Christians. Right then, I guess we can't fix every problem with peace, so it's time for Jesus to cut. Kill the demon, go to hell. Kill the demon, go to hell. Kill the Lord of the Flies, go to hell. And the Bible lesson we learned today, kids, is that violence solves everything. Jesus Christ RPG is an RPG where you walk around an overworld, explore buildings, talk to people for advice and items, buy weapons and armor, find party members in the form of disciples, level up with experience points to learn new miracles, and attack everyone that disagrees with you in turn-based battles. <laughs> <gasps> How tabled the turn. Sadly though, you can't walk on water. You're not my Jesus. You can't progress throughout the game without obtaining certain miracles, which you can use in combat as well as the overworld. But in order to get those miracles, you have to do a lot of fights to get a lot of XP. I don't remember that bit in the Bible where Jesus had to grind. The thing is though, this game may be on Steam, but it's totally free to download, and it's a totally functional RPG. I've got no complaints about it, really. And to make things even better, this game is actually a trilogy. Yeah, three RPGs in one. Rise Jesus Christ RPG is more of the exact same, so I won't say anything about it. But what about Baby Jesus Christ RPG? What could this one be like? We get some intro text talking about the angel Gabriel coming down to see Mary for a bit of the old in-out, in-out, and she's not very happy about it. So Gabriel tells Mary that she'll be pregnant with the Son of God despite her being a virgin and her face sums it all up. And then, as if by magic, with the tiniest tap of the spacebar, she's knocked up in a single frame. Disappointingly, not much else happens after that and it becomes more of the exact same again. The main problem with this though is that I went out of the town to try and explore when all of a sudden I was jumped by a desert thief and Mary was surprised. So surprised, she died in one hit. Game over. And here's baby Jesus about to be stabbed. Sitting in a big Poo. Fine then, I'll stock up on some weapons before I leave. Hello there, poor starving child. I don't have any food, but did you know the only food you need is the word of Jesus Christ? I'll buy something off of you. Um... Battle saw? Perfect. Oh look, it's Joseph. Time to go to Bethlehem and give birth to our bastard child. Oh no, a tourist appeared and called us... <laughs> Hill Billy's from Nazareth. I guess now we have no choice but to kill him with our battle saw. And luckily, Joseph joined our party pre-equipped with a giant battle hammer. We look around all of the inns to stay for the night, and sadly, there's nowhere to go. I can see where this is going. Time for us to have a perfectly normal and natural birth in a cow pack. We find the right stable we need, walk in the door, and then immediately there's Jesus. Boy, that was quick. Okay, then time to move on to the next game I found. Fluffy and God's Amazing Christmas Adventure. I don't know if Jesus has anything to do with this game, but he did have a lot of hair, so Fluffy must be his nickname. Oh dear. Fluffy is not Jesus. Fluffy is a sheep. Alright, so this game isn't about Jesus at all, which means it doesn't count. But the second that God appeared in the game and started talking, I couldn't bring myself to stop recording it. So this is one of those I'm just gonna tell you the story of Jesus games with a few interactive elements along the way. But when I say a few, I really mean a few because most of this just goes on and on and on. Hey, you know what I really wanted to do today? Become a prophet! And like all good prophets, I need to rewrite my own version of Asaya 9, my favourite movie in the series. But we can only edit what's already there a few words at a time. Name a thing that is super good. Premarital sex. Name a thing that is really bright. 
my asshole. Name a form of restraint or force that is really strong. The policeman. Two words that mean the same thing as smashed. Wasted and drunk. One word that describes what the whole world could use. YouTube.com forward slash Kadikura. Name a profession that helps people. My dealer. A new, more exciting title for God. Uh... Mister? Name a royal title or government title given to a leader. Yas Queen. A good adjective. Oh, sorry. An good adjective such as great man or loving mother. Bulging. Perfect. Time to export. You know what? For a game that's about Jesus and where Christmas comes from, I didn't see Jesus a single time in this game. Where the hell was he? Time to move on to the next game then. Fist of Jesus, a game that used to be on Steam and mobile phones back in 2015 before suddenly being removed forever, meaning you can't actually buy it anymore unless you already owned it before it was taken down. Or you pirate it. What's really sad though is that even after all the effort I went through to download the game and emulate it, I really don't have much to say about it. Maybe it's because I pirated the Android version, it's the only one that I could find and get working, but this is one of the most basic beat-em-ups I've ever played. Okay, well Lazarus has come back from the dead and is turning everyone into zombies, and Jesus wants us to send him back to hell, otherwise he'll get told off. The game is a beat-em-up. You beat em and you up em. It's incredibly straightforward shit. Each level is a little arena, you can pick up weapons, you have a few unlockable special moves, and you can either survive as long as you can, or kill a certain number of zombies, chickens, or dirty stinking lepers. You don't even control Jesus for most of it, which is even more disappointing. Instead, you play as Judas. I mean, if you like the idea of killing sheep with the stars of Bethlehem, or pulling the hearts out of non-believers because that will make them join your religion, then by all means, illegally download the game and see for yourself. But it's just a bit too wishy-washy for me. There's not much going on here. Here is Pathway to Jesus on the iPhone. This is a video game where you pilot a time-traveling spaceship powered by a Bible that is searching for Jesus F. Christ. And on your mobile phone no less. Suddenly the ship crashes and we wake up in this very strange place. This is an extremely basic pushing puzzle game and I mean extremely basic. This has solely been designed for the kiddie winks so they can easily get their daily dose of the man in the bathroom. To be fair though it isn't awful, it looks fine enough and it has decent production values. The spirit of God descended on him like a dove and a voice from heaven spoke on him saying this is my son whom I love. And that's why I'm going to let him die on a big wooden stone. Okay, I take it back. This game isn't that good at all. Just check out this AI here. I heard something. I heard something. Do you just not like gingers? Is that what this is? Oh, and you'd think I wouldn't complain about the controls here when all you do is swipe the screen, but man, it is non-stop. You swipe for every single individual space you need to move. After a while, it kills your finger. It's just constant rubbing. I feel like Jesus is fluffer. Miracles of Jesus for Windows 95. If you want eternal salvation in heaven, all you need is 32 megabytes of RAM. And thus Jesus said unto his disciples, it is better to set the system color depth to 256. We boot the game up and I'm in love with the fact that Jesus' corpse is the mouse pointer. I, I love it. And let's begin our path to heaven with some puzzles. First off, there's this painting game and I made my own masterpiece. Then there's Spot the Difference. And if you get it wrong too many times, Y you burn in hell, I don't know. Finally, there's these jigsaws to solve. What I find interesting though is that these are the only games on this disc, and they are all memory games. Remember what the right colours are for painting, remember what was different about the original picture, also that the kids playing can train their stupid idiot pea brains to remember as much holy scripture as possible. Hey, I know that sounds cynical, but none of the games I've played so far had an entire section dedicated to just reading prayers at you. Ah, a prayer before going to sleep in case we don't wake up. How sweet. Okay, time to head off to my favourite biblical game, and let's check out some of the characters of the Bible. Oh wow! Joseph, you could really do with a haircut, and David, you could do with a new face. Hang on, where's Mary? Why isn't she a main character in Jesus' life? Uh, well, I guess she didn't do too much. She only birthed him. Right, fine then. Let's... Huh. Let's go and see what weapons is. Time to check out the word of God now. How about obedience? He who does not love God and does not keep his words is in for eternal damnation. So you're saying I need to be gay? And finally we have the story, the main event of this ancient holy artifact. 
from Windows 95. This is simply a very basic retelling of the life of Jesus without any interactivity, and that's it. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be one of those, like, Disney storybook games, but with added smiting, and no, it's just a boring narration telling you things that Jesus did, and apparently the narrator can't even read. Okay, to be fair, there is this one awesome bit where you do safe cracking with Jesus, but aside from that, I've got nothing to add. It doesn't even finish the story at the crucifixion. It just stops right here as he gets taken away after being caught kissing a man in a forest, because it was illegal back then. Luckily, the voice acting is easily my favourite thing. At the end of it all, though, Miracles of Jesus does show off my personal favourite miracle he ever pulled off. The time when he found the fire exit. By the way, if any of you out there are genuinely worried that I'll be damned to hell for all eternity for making this video, don't worry. I was christened, so I get a free pass. Next up, we have this special little gem known as the U Testament, a game about Jesus made by a guy called M. Dickey, who is infamous around the internet for making the worst things. Game starts off with a character creator and... <laughs> <laughs> I am not changing anything about him. Welcome to planet Earth, Sid Arthur. The game follows your journey to meet Jesus Christ and become besties with him. But first we need to get baptised, which ends up not happening because we're told we're a fool. And then, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look, the quality just got worse. Good. And then this woman appears claiming to be God. But we know that isn't possible. By the way, those cutscenes, yeah, I'm not doing anything to them. They just run like that at three frames a second. If my 3090 can't run this beast, we are beyond saving. I guess we're dealing with a bit of of a tricky dicky. So this fake god over here, she's so fake that as soon as she stops speaking, the entire village of bug-eyed freaks all rush at her to beat her to the ground. But I don't join in. I watch instead. We run off somewhere else, and lo and behold, there he is! Mr. Christ himself! Yes, I know he looks like an alcoholic bricklayer, but trust me, it's definitely him. And at this point, all we have to do is follow him and watch stuff happen. Yeah, that's it. Map tells us where to go, we find him. Map tells us he's moved somewhere else, we find him. Map tells us he's moved somewhere else, we find him. And every time we find him, he gives us a new wisdom. If anything, I just wish that more interesting stuff happened here, because nothing really does. Aside from the time that I got fed up and decided to beat Jesus, at which point he said, touch me again and I'll kill you. Well, we'll see about that. Something that I do actually like a little bit are the loading screens in between each area. They give you spiritual quotes about the life of Jesus from famous religious figures, including Mahatma Gandhi, the Prophet Muhammad, Pharrell Williams, Jay-Z, Bruce Lee. By the way, on the character creation screen, you can make some absolute freaks of nature, let me tell you. Like Peter, the 33-year-old, one-foot-tall, fat and angry old man. And then there's Elijah, the 11-foot-tall, topless, bearded woman with a receding hairline. Now, I know there's a few of you out there that like getting stepped on, but is this too much, or do you consider it a challenge? Secrets of Jesus, and there is Jesus telling us a secret. I love this artwork. It's the angriest hushing face I've ever seen. Why does Jesus look so intimidating? It's like I caught him in the church touching kids. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Here are some of the Steam achievements. Jesus gets assassinated. Jesus is ticklish and pissed. The game starts off in Italy where a lonely fisherman can't catch any fish. So then he starts whinging about having pizza again and then starts complaining about his weight. And then, oh Jesus, Lord in heaven, please don't make me eat pizza again. I'm praying to the almighty Lord, please don't make me eat pizza again. And God himself hands him a message in a bottle that reads, don't get too excited, there's nothing actually useful in this message, but have you heard of a man named Jesus? Immediately, we forget the plight of the starving fish man and end up in Jesus' crib. And guess what? He won't stop bitching either. I don't like my house. I can't sleep. My neck hurts. I have OCD. Just get to the point already. Look, here's Mary doing something weird with her arm legs. Let's give her a pat. Good boy. Surprise! For God's sake, Jesus! There is so much talking in this damn thing. I know point and click games tend to be a bit talky, but no joke, this is mostly dialogue. Absolutely insipid dialogue that doesn't mean anything, explain anything, contribute to the plot. It's like walking into someone else's text messages from the year 30 AD. He goes around the town being so high and mighty, it makes me sick. He finds an old man, demands his name, and then when he asks for Jesus' name in return, he replies, Don't worry, simple to you can't pronounce it anyway. He disturbs the home of a naked woman, demands that she come outside because he's going to heal people. She says no thanks because I'm, you know, naked. And he says back to her that if she comes out right now, he'll use his powers to enlarge some of her. Oh no, what's this now? Jesus Christ himself refuses to carry on walking forward on this path because there are two rabbits in the way. Clicking around, clicking around, clicking around. I have no idea what I'm doing. Can't go this way, can't go that way. 
day. Can't pick this up. Can't pick that up. Ruin this person's day. Ruin that person's day. Do you want to know what the name of the next game is? Jesus in space. Star date 9 10 18. Christians aboard the starship Tarsus are on a mission to. Oh man, let me guess. A mission to save an entire planet's ecosystem. A mission to. Share the gospel. This is Stu Dent, and he's a lovable little Christian boy whose sole mission is to explore other planets and share the good word of Jesus. Sadly, you never get to see Jesus in space in... Jesus in space. But it's okay. Instead, you get to see Humpty Dumpty. Oh, and they also have this robot dressed as a Sunday school teacher. By the way, look at this picture. I've never seen a game screenshot where absolutely nothing looks like it belongs together. And I love it. All of a sudden, we get an extreme close-up of sunburned Buzz Lightyear. Okay, right. So here are three missions we need to do. And Stu Dent is very excited about them. And to be honest, I'm very curious how they're going to tell the baptism of Jesus Christ in space. Well, this is how. By explaining it with a fish priest. But little do they know, at my primary school, this is what all my vicars looked like. Just like with that fluffy game from earlier, we need to fill in blank parts of a sentence with our own words. But woefully, we only get to swap between a small number of sensible suggestions, making this whole thing not fun at all. Oh, to be fair, the way the robot says reef does make it all worth it. Then we need to decorate an underwater scene to show off what we learned about the baptism of Jesus. Let's have a look at one last mission before we move on, though. The Last Supper and... Foot washing? And who is going to teach us? Well, this guy's gonna teach us. Chief Wackamack with his. Oh. Oh. Oh no. He's gonna be offensive, isn't he? Now, this minigame, this minigame is toss. What they want you to do is say if the robot here is right or wrong when he tries to remember a Bible verse that he acts out. If you know it, you carry on. If you don't, you electrocute a child. Yeah, that's just how I remember my church. Get it right or you die. In fact, this kid is so desperate to meet his maker, he even made this device, named it after himself, and positioned it directly above him. You know, just in case he gets an answer wrong. He clearly enjoys it, and who am I to tell him he's wrong? But just like his crotch, I'm disappointed and concerned. What are we ending this pilgrimage on? Jesus in the Matrix. Where am I? What am I doing? Who are you? Why are there Christian Facebook minion memes? I don't think I've ever been this confused jumping into anything in my life. What am I supposed to make of any of this? Do you know what these things are? They are not subliminal billboard ads. They're cards, and they're a core part of the game. Cards, according to the website, penetrate into the lives of men and crushes the fetters of the lies, brackets, of the Matrix, asterisk, 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 so that anyone who has understood and accepted Jesus' sacrifice can freely see and breathe. What's that? That didn't make any damn sense to you whatsoever? Good, because the whole game doesn't either. But after a very long time of me just running around in circles wondering if this was my punishment after I died in real life, I ended up figuring out that all of these floating red pills here are opposite to these blank cards. And to beat the game, you need to fill all of them in with the correct words of each part of certain Bible scripture to make the card light up. And according to this lady that I found in a... Greenhouse? If you don't believe in the almighty, you are living in the matrix, and the only way to get out of the matrix is to click on the correct word. Is this game a joke? Is it taking the piss? I actually can't tell. If this is all supposed to convince me not to go to hell, it isn't working, so off I go. And I trapped myself in the game forever. Yep, I'm stuck. I can't kill myself, I can't respawn, I'm just stuck. But hey, I did kill Satan because I found his one single weakness. Draw distance. And I know what you're all thinking. Where is Jesus in the Matrix? Yep, there he is. Hi, Jesus. He died for our sins, and now he's stuck in the Matrix with Agent Smith. And if you ever had any doubt in your mind if Jesus ever existed, well, Jesus is so real that you can walk right through him. Yeah, I think I'm just about done here. What a trip that was. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed this video from me this holiday season. And whatever you celebrate this time of year, I hope you enjoy it.